Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. It has been quite a while but I have been super busy with work and I thought I'd kick off a new video here with some donations that I received from viewers all over the place. So we've got a laptop here, a compact Presario desktop, I see an iMac desktop, a compact and docking station and what a docking station it is. I see the iBook G4, we have a docking station for the ThinkPad, we have a couple of boxes, and one big box here filled with hardware goodies. It's pretty mind-boggling to see the generosity of the viewers of my channel, and I appreciate this very, very much. So I'm going to go over everything, and not in too much detail, because we have a whole lot to cover. There's still a lot of stuff in these boxes here as well. But I'm pretty sure you'll end up seeing most of this stuff in a future video. I just have to find the time and the setting where I can create them, because there is a lot, a lot of stuff here that has been accumulating here over the past couple of months. But to show some respect also to the people that have sent this to me, I thought I'd create this video. So let's kick things off. And we'll start with this really nice little iBook G4 Apple laptop computer. I got this from a really nice fella named Glenn who works about five minutes from where I work. And he actually donated a whole bunch of stuff including the laptops that you are about to see and also lots of motherboards and video cards. I do have the power connector here for this iBook. I don't have the actual adapter. Just need to figure out what is positive and negative here before I switch it on. But yeah, cool little laptop. Uh, although I do use Apple laptops professionally, I never used them um, outside of work. I, I don't really have a connection with them, but I am looking forward to kind of reliving that, that earlier generation of uh, iBooks uh, from Apple. So yeah, the time where they still had lots of ports on the side. So yeah, looking forward to uh, to checking this one out. It's a little bit in a rough shape, but I have seen it working. Uh, the battery can still hold the charge. Uh, it does need a little bit of a cleaning, but all in all, a really nice little piece of machinery. I also have this early iMac. Again, never really worked with those. I did have an iMac at one point, but I think it was like 2011. I'm pretty sure this predates that one with a couple of years. So again, also looking forward to trying that one out. Next up is this IBM ThinkPad. It's a Pentium 4 based laptop. Uh, I kind of like the look and feel of these IBM ThinkPads, uh, both the way early ones and the later models like this came with its own little docking station. I'm actually looking forward to see if I can use this laptop as kind of a gaming machine. It has like a Pentium 4 in it. I think it has a pretty decent video card as well. So yeah, this will be fun to see uh, how this will work out. It is missing a component here. And I did try to start it at some point. It gave me a fan error. So yeah, probably will need some fixing. But yeah, it's a pretty cool little laptop. Comes with its own docking station. So yeah, pretty cool. Pentium 4, don't really have done a lot with these Pentium 4 class machines. But yeah, I really like the look and feel of the IBM ThinkPad. Another laptop here is this Compaq Armada 7600. It predates the ThinkPad with a couple of years. I think this is a Pentium 2 class machine and it comes with this humongous docking station. And the laptop itself is also quite the brick. Um, yeah, like exploring these old uh, laptops. It's the Armada 7800, by the way, the Pentium 2 class machine. So hopefully it'll still work. And man, just look at that docking station. I mean, this is like a computer all on its own. It has integrated speakers. I'm pretty sure you can fit in a, a full uh, ISA slot in here or even PCI, I don't know. So yeah, just look at this thing. So this will be fun exploring. Lots of ports on the back. We've got the power supply fan, so standard power supply. We've got a lock here. 
on the front we have an optical drive and we also have a disk drive can be uh, removed and probably be replaced with another CD-ROM drive. I don't know. Also like the fact that it has integrated speakers. So yeah, this is gonna be fun to explore uh, this little talking station. The colors are a bit off when you slide in the laptop, but at least it's compatible and yeah, we should be able to use it. So yeah, definitely looking forward to trying this one out. And again, a big thank you to Glenn for providing me with all of this cool hardware. It's always nice to see some support from Belgium from my fellow countrymen. So yeah, really, really cool and excited about this. Now Glenn was also kind enough to donate this big box filled with motherboards, video cards, sound cards, all kinds of stuff. Going through all of this would be a video on its own. So what I did was I laid out all of the cards here on the table. So let's quickly go over them. Obviously you have the mandatory PCI and ISA networking cards. Nothing special there. There is one Netgear card that I haven't seen before. But other than that, you get the usual suspects like the 3Com networking cards. We've got this USB controller, a CD-ROM controller, some uh, sound cards. We have two PCI video cards, one Trident and one S3. Then we have a whole bunch of AGP cards, mostly GeForce MX class video cards. Here we have the GeForce 4 MX 460. We have some TNT 2 video cards, some GeForce cards, and then a whole bunch of PCI Express video cards also. So that will be a video on its own. I haven't really touched upon the PCI Express video cards yet in my YouTube channel, so I'm guessing this is gonna be a good excuse to do so. But yeah, a whole bunch of cards here, uh, kindly donated by Glenn. And also in the motherboard department, lots of motherboards in this box. I'm just gonna do a quick collage here of the various boards that were in there. Most of them are like AMD Athlon Pentium 4 class motherboards. So, so early 2000 up until 2004, 2005, I guess. But the fun doesn't end there because Glenn also offered this sharp pocket computer combined with this printer and cassette recorder allowing you to both load and save your basic programs from the pocket computer onto this mini cassette. There is an issue with the LCD display that I hope I will be able to fix somehow, <laughs> albeit it will not be easy. But yeah, this is just a cool piece of technology. Um, the fact that you were able to write uh, basic uh, programs on this thing, uh, print out the output, uh, store the stuff on tape. It came with this nice you know, wooden uh, frame where you can just attach uh, the pocket computer. So yeah, really, really cool piece of uh, technology. Now there are some issues with the display, but I am able to turn the machine on. I can uh, operate the cassette. Um, it does seem to be reacting to commands, although I don't really see what I'm inputting and what the output is. So yeah, hopefully I will get this uh, up and running somehow. And next up we have a donation from the Netherlands from Gerard or Gerard. This is a 386SX 16 MHz CPU soldered on a motherboard with two sticks of RAM. So yeah, always nice to come across these 386 motherboards. There's a barrel battery here, but very little leakage as was already uh, communicated to me. Really looking forward to trying that one out as well. I'm pretty sure I have a couple of extra spare parts that I can use to turn this into a fully functioning PC. So again, thank you, Gerard. Another package from Belgium from Mr. Stefan van Buckel. I actually went to school with Stefan's uh, sister uh, when I was around, I don't know, like uh, 16, 17 or 18. I came to realize that afterwards. 
he was kind enough to send me this little package. We uh, kind of got to talking online uh, using the various uh, groups on, on Facebook. Um, he offered, he, he was kind enough to offer me this package. I already know what's in there, but I'm just going to open it up together with you guys. So we have a letter here. Dear Retrospector, I really love your work, what you're doing on your YouTube channel. Nice to see that there are some hardcore PC enthusiasts in Belgium as well, indeed. So this is a Seagate hard drive, I think, with a Western Digital Controller coming from a 286. So yeah, I really appreciate this. And we'll definitely hook up in person once the whole COVID thing uh, goes away. I'm getting my first shot tomorrow. So yeah, we'll definitely uh, stay in touch. So this is a 16-bit ISA controller card. So yeah, you usually see these MFM cards in 8-bit machines. So it's nice to have a 16-bit uh, ISA MFM controller card that you can use in like a 286 or a 386. We have some cables here. And here we have the actual hard drive, very well packaged. Um, I'm definitely gonna do a separate video on this because I don't think I've really touched the subject of, uh, you know, MFM drives in 16-bit uh, AT style computers. So yeah, here we have the Seagate, the ST251. Uh, yeah, really nice uh, hard drive. Hopefully it still works. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, please stay tuned for a future video on this. Here we have the defect map. But uh, as I said, I'm going to be trying this hard drive on an AT style computer, and uh, you know we'll we'll see where it uh, where it takes us. So got the cables here, the data cable, the control cable, and the 16-bit ISA MFM controller card from Western Digital. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Next up, a kind donation again from Belgium, from Chris, one of my viewers, and somebody who already met in person a couple of times. So yeah, I just love these kind of compact Presario desktops, these weirdly shaped computers. This is also an AMD-based machine, pretty small form factor. Uh, I just love these kind of, uh, yeah, these kind of quirky desktops that compact made at the end of the 90s early 2000s primarily budget uh, oriented machines it actually came with the 17 inch uh, compact or 19 inch i think i'm not sure monitor with the jbl speakers the keyboard the whole nine yards I actually got another box from chris with some other uh, hardware goodies I'm pretty sure we'll hook up again uh, in the near future. We're planning to do a documentary on Dai Computers, which is kind of a Belgium brand of uh, early 80s computers. So really looking forward to that as well. It's gonna take a quick peek inside here. There's really not much to see because the power supply is blocking uh, most of the internals, but pretty sure there's an AMD CPU uh, on this motherboard. And of course, we also have the Quantum Bigfoot hard drive. So yeah, really, really cool. Thank you, Chris. So another box that I got from Chris is not a pair of shoes, but it is a box of CPUs. So let's open this one up. So we have quite the assortment of CPUs in this box. There's even an anti-static bag here with lots of goodies, but let's take a look here. We have this huge Intel Pentium 2 Xeon CPU. I mean, just look at this thing, server grade or heavy workstation. Here we have an Adaptec SCSI card. So yeah. We actually have a list here of all the CPUs that should be included. There's also a PCI video card here. Let's see what we have here. So ATI Mach 64 from 1995. So when 3D wasn't really a thing yet. So nice little card. I'm guessing we'll have the mandatory networking cards here. Yep, so some PCI networking cards. 
I'll just throw them with my other 300 PCI networking cards that I already have. And here we have some Pentium 2 based CPUs with the integrated fan. We have another Pentium 2. I think this is a Pentium 3. So yeah, I like these card-rich uh, slot CPUs. This one runs at 450 megahertz. Let's see what else we have here. Another CPU. I think this is probably Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.3 gigahertz. A random bracket. And a little, little box here with, let's see what we have. It appears to be a relay of sorts. Hmm, interesting. Okay, shifting focus to the anti-static conductive bag. Let's see what we have inside. Seems to be a, a number of CPUs here which are wrapped in kind of paper towels. So let's see what we have. This is always nice, right? We have the an AMD. I'm really never sure what these are, Athlon or Duron, but yeah, really nice. We have some Intel Xeon CPUs. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I didn't, I'm pretty sure I'll see it in the comments. Another Intel Xeon CPU. I've never really seen those uh, up close not really sure what i'm going to do with them but should be able to find some use for them so yeah intel xeon next up i think these are mobile cpus or well, not this one this is in an amd athlon 64 i think this is again a pentium 4 or pentium d pentium d sorry these appear to be Pentium Mobile CPUs, so these probably come from laptops. And here I'm casually forgetting to look at the fifth one. <laughs> Next one. I already see the gold plating here, so this is going to be fun. Let's see what we have. Oh. I think this is one of those early Pentium CPUs, not a Pentium Pro, but this is a, yeah, a Pentium 60 megahertz, one of the first, or the first Pentium. So just look at the size of the thing next to this little Celeron here from 1998, running at 500 megahertz. Always nice to build a retro PC around the Celeron. Let's see what we have here. Another Celeron probably with an Intel Pentium 3 Costa Rica. And another Celeron running at 466 megahertz this time. Here we have the slot one. I think this is a Pentium 2. Not really sure of the speed. Some cache modules here. So yeah, all in all, not a bad collection of both modern and some older CPUs. Uh, I like the Pentium uh, 60, so that should be fun to explore. So again, thank you, Chris, from donating all of these nice goodies. I'm sure I'll be able to put them to some use in the near future. Moving overseas to Canada from Nikolai Siwalos, old computer part. 
Yes, indeed. This is most definitely an old computer part. I actually got in touch with him on Twitter, I think, where he saw my IBM 486 video, where I mentioned that it was lacking the cache module, and he happened to have such an IBM cache module. So that was really nice for him to send it over. I will definitely put it to use on the IBM 486, and we'll probably make another video on it. So thanks a lot, Nikolai. Next up, Daniel Baum from Germany. Big package here, so let's open her up and see what we have inside. Everything is very nicely packaged, so let's open up the first one, and this appears to be a motherboard. What do we have here? PC chips. So this appears to be, I think, a 286 motherboard. It lacks the CPU, the memory, and whoops, probably just erased the uh, BIOS chip here, but this board will definitely need some work. It's missing lots of chips. Uh, it doesn't have the battery, so I don't think there's too much corrosion to worry about, but we'll need to find the CPU, memory for it, and see if we can get this one up and running. So let's move on, see what else we have. We have a whole bunch of expansion cards, it seems. So let's take a look. 8-bit ISA parallel card. RAM 1A card. So this appears to be an 8-bit ISA card with some RAM chips on it. Not really sure what that is. This seems to be some kind of industrial serial port or something like that. Again, same connector here, not really sure what this is. A clock card, not really sure where this is coming from. Battery has been removed, so that's good. This is one of those parallel and, and game port style 8-bit ISA cards. Here we have another one. So whenever you're dealing with like old XT class machines, these kind of cards can come in handy if you need these kinds of expansions. We have a 16-bit ISA, a VGA card, always handy. Came with a RAM stick, not really sure what size. We have a 1.44 megabyte disk drive. We have another box with some chocolates in it. So yeah, thank you very much. We have a smart share device, which seems to include some parallel ports. And then we have an assortment of cables, and there's also a modem included here. Not really sure how I'm gonna be using this one, but yeah. So, so yeah, thank you very much to Daniel from Germany for sending all of this stuff across. And here we have a package from Alain from Belgium, from the French-speaking part of Belgium. Alain uh, reached out to me via email. I think it was already over a year ago, so sorry it took so long for me to create this video. But he offered to send me some interesting CPUs. So let's take a look at what we have in this package. It's always nice if people send this type of stuff because sometimes you know you're searching for a certain CPU and you're just unable to find it. And for example, here in this package, there was this, I'm not gonna say rare, but there's this IBM DX4 CPU that I was very interested in. So yeah, really lucked out with this one and really fortunate for uh, Alain to send this over to me. So really appreciate it. Thank you very much. We have some AMD Athlon and AMD K6 CPUs here as well. So yeah, so th these will be added to the collection and I'm sure they will be put to good use in the near future. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. And here we have a package from Chris Wareham. This is really cool, the analog synthesizer, but there's no analog synthesizer in here. But what we have here is some odd collection of floppy drives and hard drives. So this is really cool. This will definitely uh, be needing some investigation. Here we have a Miniscribe uh, hard drive. You don't come across these a whole lot. So that's really interesting. Anxious to see if this one will work. I have to say this package was sent to me again over a year ago. So 
I did unbox it really quickly, um, but I didn't have a chance to look at everything yet and only now I was able to create this video, so sorry, sorry it took so long. But, you know, work, life and YouTube sometimes gets in the way. Here we have a couple of uh, disk drives. I don't know if these are like standard issue 1.44 megabyte disk drives, but I would need to check. For example, this one is definitely not your standard three and a half inch uh, disk drive. I think this is one of those storage module devices or SMD devices. Yeah, definitely some kind of removable storage that you could uh, hook up to a computer. So yeah, we'll see if we can find uh, storage media for it and see uh, what we can do with it. Here we have a Motif 2.1. 1.0 from Red Hat. We have two more disk drives here. Yeah, probably also these SMDs. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious to see what this is all about because I'm totally unaware of these things. So, yeah, we'll definitely need some investigation. And here we have a manual for the Red Hat Motif 2.1. Hope I'm pronouncing it directly. It's kind of a window manager from uh, Red Hat. So, yeah, really nice. This appears to be a video card. I think this is an Apple uh, video card. Not really sure what that is. And finally, we have two more 1.44 megabyte disk drives. So yeah, a big thanks to Chris for sending this over. And that's a wrap for this video. Again, I am really humbled and grateful for all of these donations. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for sending this stuff to me. This will definitely get the attention it deserves on the channel in a future video. If anybody else out there wants to support the channel or wants to get in touch or has some cool hardware that they would like to see on the channel, just drop me a mail. My uh, email is in the about section of the YouTube channel. So again, uh, thank you very much to everybody. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's lots more cool content to come on the channel. I've been really busy with my day job over the past couple of weeks because we have an important release that we need to hit. So my apologies for not putting out more frequent videos. But normally we should uh, go back to the normal routine where you can expect at least one video per week. So hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider subscribing, liking, uh, giving a comment to the video. And I hope to see you guys very soon for the next video. Bye-bye.